Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Again, I was not planning on filming this video, you guys. I read this book maybe like three weeks ago now, and I simply cannot stop thinking about it. And so we're gonna talk about it today. And that is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. Um, I got my copy like used online and I didn't know that it didn't come with a dust jacket so I don't have one but based on you know how much I love this book spoiler alert um I think I'm gonna get another copy because this one is just subpar but anyways yeah I thought this book deserved its own video I know this book has been out for a couple years now and so my voice doesn't really matter anymore. I feel like most people have solidified their opinions on this book, but I thought, why not? It's new to me and I wanted to talk about it because I just think this book is so polarizing and I find that so interesting and let's just start a conversation, you know? A little bit about this book. So. Marcus Zusak, he is the Australian author that wrote the book Thief, and that is one of my favorite books of all time. I love it. I feel like everyone loves it. It was really the book of the year back whenever it came out. And then he went on like a 10 year hiatus, or maybe more than that, uh, writing this book. It may have taken like 14 years or something insane to write this. And people were, you know, awaiting its release, and then it came out, and then people started reading it, and very polarizing. You truly do either love this book or you hate it. And I loved it, but I can definitely see why people hate it. And you know, there were times where I hated it too. So let's get into it. It's a book that right when you start it, you are thrown into the story. There's really no introductions. There's no kind of background information. You are just thrown into this story and it is honestly hard work to get through this book. It's not easy. You are just putting in a lot of hard work to figure out what's happening and then I think it's really rewarding at the end. I know not everyone thinks that. Let's talk about the, what this is about. So we follow five brothers, the Dunbar boys, and this is narrated by the eldest brother, Matthew and he talks for a majority of the book. So it's mainly about Clay, who is the fourth brother, and then there's Rory, Henry, or Harry, and then Tommy. <laughs> Tommy's the youngest. Mainly we talk about Clay, and they're living in the suburbs of Sydney, Australia, and they are just trying to get by. Their mother ends up passing away, and then like six months later, their father leaves them to kind of fend for themselves and so that's kind of where we pick up. They bicker, they fight, they're five brothers. There's a lot of angst, there's a lot of funny moments as well. We're seeing them just trying to pick up the pieces. The oldest brother Matthew is kind of like the head of the household and trying to keep everyone in line. None of them can really forgive their father for leaving them, obviously. And so one day the father comes back by the way, this is spoiler free. One day their father comes back and he's like, hey, I need help building this bridge. Basically he lives across this river and the river always floods and he can never drive over the road and so he needs to build this bridge. It's also very metaphorical as well as physical bridge. And you know, all the brothers hate him, can't forgive him for some things that you find out later but they all kind of look to Clay. There's some sort of a dynamic that Clay had with his mom and dad that no other brother had, and he is kind of, kind of the glue that keeps the family together. Like, he's very sensitive and just kind of the most soft-spoken brother, and everyone kind of looked to him to go with their father to build this bridge. That's what he does. Uh, Clay goes with his father to build this bridge. He comes back every once in a while. There is a love interest that he gets in the book. That was kind of random to me. <laughs> so that's like our main plot line. When Matthew's not narrating, we follow Michael, the father, and Penny, the mother that ends up dying. But that's not a spoiler, I promise. So we look at Michael's past, we look at Penny's past, which I loved. I loved those aspects so much, like very historical. And kind of the dynamic that Clay had with his parents because he was definitely like one of the closer 
sons to them. That's pretty much the plot line. I don't want to give anything away. As to why people hate this book, <laughs> and as to why I kind of hated it too, it is all over the place. It is just very disorganized. It's really just a patchwork of different stories coming along. It's very just muffled. It's not a clean book to read. It's not an easy read. It really, I don't know, when I was reading it, I thought that I was like reading it kind of through like a foggy lens. Like nothing is super clear. I don't know, I just, there was never a point where I knew exactly what was going on and what was being talked about. The writing and the language that Marcus uses is very frilly, very extra. Some people really hate that and I kind of hated it too. Honestly, it takes a good while to get going. It takes a good like 75, maybe 100 pages to really understand what's happening and to kind of get into the book. So you could really start the novel like halfway through, which brings up the point then like, does that even make it a good book if you could literally get rid of half of it and still come away with the same messages? That's up for debate. A lot of people also say they couldn't really connect with a certain character or any character. And I will say that Clay is not the most likable character, but I loved his relationship with his brothers. At the end of the novel, I was sobbing my eyes out, which it's been a long while since I've sobbed from a book. Um, may insert a picture of me crying <laughs> while finishing it. Um, if a book can do that to me emotionally, I consider it a win. I consider it a really, really good book. And the fact that I was confused for most of this novel and it still had that effect on me, like tells me something, you know? You definitely have to be patient. It's not like a quick fluffy read that you just pick up. You really have to be kind of in it for the long haul. And I feel like there's no way of telling if you're gonna like this novel or not until you start it. But I will give a little tip if you're starting this novel. There's this, um, there's this part in the very beginning that says before the beginning and it's about 10 pages long and it's Matthew talking about this little journey that he's going on and you read that and then you start the actual novel of part one and for me I just couldn't get what happened in that pre-beginning out of my mind because I was so confused. I really hate that that's there, but like I get it. And he said it's a book that you can read forwards and backwards, inwards and outs. And it was just confusing. It was just kind of like a, a wrong move in my opinion, because once you get to the end and finish it, then you can go back to that like before the beginning and that's where the story ends. So it's really confusing. I don't know if that made sense, but Part of me would like save that part to the very end of the book because otherwise you're just always thinking about it and like how did we get here? You know, it's like showing the final scene of a movie and then starting from the beginning of the movie onwards. And it's like, like I get why people do that, but to me it was just kind of unnecessary and confusing. <laughs> That's kind of one of my biggest complaints of this novel, but I found it to be such a touching story of brothers like that's really what it gets down to is family and I have two sisters so I could kind of see like our relationships in the relationships of the brothers and how they're getting along without their parents that's a very like it's not an easy thing to do so I loved that coming of age aspect to the novel and I loved reading about the parents' backgrounds and how they got there and how they raised this family. I don't know what else to say. All I can say is that I cannot get this story out of my head and that's when I know that it was a good book because I've read so many books that so many of them just like go in one ear and out the other and this is not the case with this book. But if you find yourself reading it and you absolutely hate it and don't understand, like I get why people don't finish this book and I was about to not to but there was just something about the story that I just wanted to know why certain things were happening and being said and so I found myself not being able to put it down 
It does take a little bit to get into it. I promise it's worth it. If it's not, I'm sorry. We all have our different opinions. Like I know people have finished this and like probably regretted it, but I freaking love this book. I would just highly recommend it. And I think that's all I have to say. If you've read it, I would love to hear your thoughts on it, if you hated it. Um, I just put off reading this for so long because it's honestly a pretty long book. But once you get going, you get going. So that's all I gotta say. Also, I did not know that this took place in Australia. For most of the book, I thought it was England. So I was very confused sometimes. <laughs> that's all I have to say about Bridget Clay, man. There's a lot of words out there about this book. I think it's a beauty. I think it's very worthwhile to read and would highly recommend. So that's just my opinion. It's one of the most like adult books and how like mature slash frilly the writing is. So that was new for me. I, <laughs> I'm honestly still kind of confused on my full feelings of this book because there are parts that I hated, but I loved it. And I just, I've never felt that way about a book before. So I think that he's doing something right. That's this book, that's this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> and let me know if you've read this down below and what you thought i would love to conversate with you i will see you guys in my next video bye guys